Hey guys, we continue doing truth bearings, subtopic from trigonometry, and I'm going to show you the last example similar to what we were doing in the previous video, where we saw, where we saw navigational problem dedicated to bearings. However, in this case, it's going to be a bit more tricky because the angle within the triangle is now going to be 90 degrees, so your triangle is not going to be a right angle triangle as it was in the previous problem. So make sure you guys you watch this video where I actually explain and we've gone through different set of questions so that actually I think we fully we we explore it in full. So let's get started and we considering the last problem within the topic of bearings. So pause the video, grab the pen grab your notes or paper, try to do by your own, and let's get started. So we have the board, the boat, uh, that departs from port P, so that's why we normally do the same, the same strategy here. So we have initial point P, then we have the first setup, nose direction immediately, right there. And now we have a course 150 degrees. So that's why in this case, I hope I'll do more precisely. So I think that angle is okay. So let it be 150 degrees and 400 kilometers. So we'll set up that this is 400 kilometers. To the point P1, which is actually the interim point here, and then so and the bearings we can mark immediately. So the bearings is 150 degrees. Okay, so next it turns it's another bearings 220 and sails first is 300 kilometers. So pretty the same that we explored before. So 220 degrees, maybe somewhere here. Right, so and sails further. Let's go over there, maybe like this. Yeah, perfect. So that's P2. So the bearings from nose direction from point P1 is going to be 220 degrees. So better use the red color in this case. So this 220 degrees, that's the bearings of P2 um, from P1, okay? And that's 300 kilometers. All right, what we're gonna do right now, we need to define the distance of P2 from P. So of P2 to P, all right, so the same questions the same question so actually we can consider as displacement from initial point p to the final point p2 how we need to define the length of this all right so that's going to be d displacement and we want to figure out the magnitude of that so we need to find the magnitude if we consider as the vector all right what we're going to do remember in the previous problem we need we need to define this angle first okay let's set up as x and find out how many degrees was the value for that what we're gonna do we're gonna use two parallel lines that's normally the case I set up two parallel lines change the color so we put two parallel lines parallel to the north direction and they're also parallel to each other, okay? Let's say that those are parallel lines. Why we need that? In order to define the angle, which is alternate, okay? 150 degrees is alternate angle with X plus the rest small red part, okay? So this small red part, it's right there. 
it's in between the blue line north basically direction and the small green vector p1 p2 okay so in total we understand that 150 degrees is basically equal to angle x that we need to define in order to understand which sort of triangle we have and so 20 220 in order to define this small angle we can subtract from 220 180 why because again this part so this small part is an open angle so the rest part this uh, basically red part is going to be 40 up to 220 so that's why the small angle is going to be 40 degrees so in total x and 40 represent the same as 150 because those two angles complete angle here are alternate so that's why it's going to be plus 40 as well so from where we can figure out the angle itself angle x becomes angle 110 degrees and it's not 90 so that's why your triangle is not right angle so we can say that triangle pp1 p2 basically scaling so is not right angled all right so what it means in terms of how to define the side opposed to that angle if we consider triangle we can use so we use cosine theorem which actually connects the side opposed to that angle with two other sides and angle itself so how it sounds if i set up this as a and this as b so we have 400 and 300 kilometers so we can say that using cos rule we can say that d squared is going to be a squared and b squared this part of from pythagoras but we need to make an adjustment according to cos theorem so cos of 110 degrees so actually the angle between them okay so angle x so if you like i can consider it as angle x if you like in general in our case angle x is 110 so we can use definitely that so 110 so we can plug 110 here a and b becomes 400 and 300 correspondingly so we can figure out d mentally so that's not the problem as you might see simply we take in the square root of 400 squared 300 squared minus 2 times 400 and times 300 times cos of 110 degrees so cos 110 if you calculate that so if we calculate cos 110 it's going to be a negative number it's negative number however it's okay so it doesn't matter so that make sure you have correct calculations i can do it in one line and simply i'll get d is equal to 576 and let's say 27 according to my calculations that's kilometers so that's why as you can see no problems with the angle which is not right angle so you might use alternatively cosine rule and if you're familiar with that it shouldn't be any problem with that okay so we've done a let's have a look at b we need to find the bearings of p from p1 so p from p1 so we consider those two points and because from p1 so we set up nose direction in p1 where it actually currently staying so we set up north direction right there this is north direction point p1 and we want to define the angle so your angle 
your angle, your bearings in clockwise direction. So until you meet the segment PP1 is going to be 180 right there and then plus 150 degrees because I just highlight maybe as a green one. So that angle, that angle is equal to 150 because as alternate angle. So in total, this green part along with 180 will give you 150 and 180. So we've got the bearings to be 150 degrees plus 180. In total, we will have 330 degrees as the bearings. And we completed part B. So that's intentionally uh, was given to you as an alternative way to calculate bearings and to calculate the distance. And distance basically, um, it's, it's called bearings and distance uh, type of the problem. And all those three problems you can consider as the complete guide for bearings topic so that you not get failed on your exams. So make sure you understood that. And so please guys, Try to practice because only practicing will show whether you're able to undertake similar problems. That was Daniel Dallas. Peace out.